So this is what we will have as a final result. I hope you can see me. I'm going to play it in my phone. There we go. And this is the final result that we, we are going to have. Now, to create this, we had to create a ton of things, okay? So we have this as an image, okay? This was our starting point. So we started with this, and then we did a little bit of healing. So I'm gonna zoom in a little bit, and I'm gonna show you what we actually did. So this I'm using as a reference, and at the end of the video, at the end of the live stream, I do have some freebies for you, so stay tuned. Amazing freebie to really help you guys with retouching photos of children. So I actually posted a post on Facebook about retouching children, and people thought I was a pervert or something like that. So retouching images of children. All right, so um, yes, so this is the image we're gonna start with and then we're gonna heal it a little bit. So I have a healing layer there. So look at the eye bags, we filled in the eye bags. We're gonna go through each step, do not worry, okay? Then, and one thing you must notice that I have organized everything, every layer, in the form of a group so that anytime you think, okay, the skin is not right, so let's go to the skin group and just edit the skin, the skin color is not like, uh, right, maybe you might think the eyes are not right, just simply go to the eyes group. If you have named everything, if you have arranged everything in a group, it becomes so much more easier for you to edit that. Okay, so first healing and then a little bit of frequency separation. Now here comes the magic. I talked about frequency separation in my previous live stream where we use the mixer brush for frequency separation. It's an awesome tool to do that, awesome way to do it. Do it, frequency separation, look, it was very minimal. Have a look. It was really very minimal. Okay? Before, after. Really minimal, but it makes a ton of difference. Now, after frequency separation, we have overall contrast. Okay? After that, I added an overall contrast to add some mood to it, just like that. And then, dodging and burning. This is also one of the keys of really making the portraits stand out. Look at what it did to the photo. So, what dodging and burning does is that it gives dimension to the photo. For example, look at a flat circle with a flat color. Now, what does it look? Flat, right? But here's the thing. If you shine a portion of that circle, and if you darken the opposite portion of that circle, what, what does it become? It becomes a sphere, right? It has some dimension. Now, let me show you. The, you need to understand the theory behind dodging and burning. Anything which is protruding, Anything which is protruding in the direction of light, not many people say anything that's protruding towards you or towards the screen, no. Anything which is protruding in the direction of light has to be brightened. Anything which is going away from the direction of light has to be darkened. Remember the direction of light. For example, let me just create a document and let me show you what dodge and burn actually means. So if you just simple, simply create a document, maybe a very simple document, anything will do. Is the audio video right? Everything is right? Just let me know, okay? Any document, maybe 1000 pixel grid, really doesn't matter, just for representation purposes. Now, if we go ahead and create a circle right here, and say we fill it up with gray, so 50% gray, okay, we filled it up with gray. By the way, if you're wondering which shortcut I used, it was shift, Backspace, okay? Shift, backspace. Shift, delete, I think, if it's for Mac, okay? If you press Shift, backspace, this dialog box will appear asking you what do you want to fill it with? Okay, you want to fill it with 50% gray, black, or white? Whatever you want to fill it with. So I chose 50% gray and click OK. Now here's the magic. Let's create it on its separate layer. Let's do that. Okay. Now, create another layer. This is looking flat, right? Now, what does dodging and burning do? It gives this a dimension. Now, if we take a brush, if we take white color, if we decrease the flow to say 10, okay? And in this, just brighten up this area. Okay, simply brighten up this area. I'm gonna create a clipping mask there. Just this area, okay? We brightened up this area. Okay. And we choose black and we darkened up this area. Have a look at this. Now what does this become? This becomes a sphere, have a look. We just brightened certain areas and darkened certain areas and that gave this a dimension. Have a look at the before and after. Before, after. Magic, isn't it? And that's what we do in dodging and burning. Let's just close it. Did you understand this? Just let me know. 
Okay, that's what we do in dodging and burning. So we bring out the areas which are in the direction of light, paint it with white or any bright color. We'll see how to do that and darken the areas which are protruding away from the direction of light. So this is dodging and burning. Look how nicely it gives this image a dimension. And then we'll work on the skin a little bit, make it a little darker, and then on the eyes a little bit, and make the eye a little whiter, then a miscellaneous kind of gave it a little tinge, etc. Add some mood to the photo, and maybe add some flares. So that's what we will do. Then we can add some curves, some extra overall, then hue saturation, a little bit decrease it. And that's it. So that's what we are supposed to do. Uh, nice use of dodging and burning. Okay. He is offline right now. Anybody? I'm not offline. I'm online. Hello from India. Agra. Great to see you. Madhusudan Kumar. Great to see you. Uh, perfect background change. Tutorial upload. Glad about your job. And my sin. Thank you so much. Aquario. Uh, okay. So let's go ahead. Hi, Massimo. Great to see you. So first off, we're going to import that photo into Lightroom. So we'll open up the folder and this was the photo. So by the way, if you want to check out more of her work, Egle Thompson, she was very nice to have us submit, submitting the photo. So check it out by her page that's captured by Miss E on Facebook. I'll link, her, link up her face after the live stream when it goes for replay. Okay. Now once you open that up, open the raw image in Photoshop, it opens up in Adobe Camera Raw. Now, I'm not sure they can see it or not because this is really huge. Let's make it a little smaller. I just hope you can see it. So let's do a couple of adjustments. So I've already done a couple of adjustments here. So I've increased the exposure just a little bit, 1.5. And didn't do much, increased the temperature a little bit. And shadows, took the shadows all the way down because this was the normal one. Let's take the shadows all the way down. and increase the clarity and that's not much I did with it maybe 15 16 is fine and that's all that's all I did now once you are happy with it instead of opening the image all you have to do press and hold shift and click on open object when you press shift it changes to open object now what does that do is that open that image as a smart object it has its own advantages what advantages we'll discuss it further just click on open object and once you click on open object as you can see it will open that as an object it's open it's taking up some time now it has opened that as an object anytime you want to go back you just double click on it and it will open up in camera raw with the settings that you had already set see all the white ba balance information still intact everything still intact so that's kind of a next level non-destructiveness so Alan asks, I'm out struggling to cut out my daughters using the selected mask in a low contrast background. Could you help me away? It totally depends upon image to image as to what strategy you will use. Excuse me. So depends upon the image. Is the color of your daughter's hair different from the background? If it is, use select color range. If the color is similar, there's nothing you can do with it. If the brightness is different, something, some element has to be different. Otherwise, there's no other way. I have to say, this is the bitter truth. There has to be something which is different, which is contrasty. It might not be light. It might be color. Okay? Anything which is different from a hair. Only then you'll be able to have a perfect selection or you'll have to sacrifice some hairs. Now, by sacrifice, I mean you have to just find that happy place that more than this cannot be selected. Okay? You have to understand that. Okay. So next thing, what are we going to do? We're going to do is healing. For healing, we also want the healing to be non-destructive. How to do that? Simple. Just zoom in a little bit. Create a new layer. Okay. Once you've created a new layer, name it healing. Do that. This is, that's very essential. Name that healing. And now take the healing brush tool, the regular healing brush tool that always gives you the best result. And by the way, this is just for high quality retouching. This is not for when you're retouching like 100 photos in a go. This is not for that. This is for very special photos. Okay. So otherwise, I should have told you to use the spot healing brush tool. But this one is important. And that's why we're going to use the healing brush tool. So we're going to take the sample of this one and just paint here take sample from here by the way I'm pressing and holding the alt and option take a sample paint over here and by the way make sure aligned is checked if the aligned is not checked what will happen is so let's go ahead and check off a line 
If you take a sample from here and paint it over here, and the next time you paint here, it will again take a sample from that particular area, and you don't want that, right? You want that source to go along, to travel along with the brush. So that's why you wanna turn the align on, so it travels. Next time you just sample from here and paint over here. See, if you paint over here again, it travels with the brush. If the align is checked off, it won't travel with the brush. Okay, understood? Any problem, any questions, make sure to ask that. Don't leave any question unanswered. I'm sorry if I'm unable to, un unable to answer any of your question. And by the way, it would, be, it would be really helpful if for now, just for now, limit your question, questions to this session. What's happening? Anyway, so just take care of the blemishes right now, the spots, okay? Don't worry about the eye bags or stuff like that. Children have beautiful, and when you're retouching, when you're softening skin, especially of children, do not retouch the smile lines. Do not make it smoother. It gives you a sign, a very bad sign that this has been retouched. Not much of a blemish here, and we are pretty much good to go. Children's face. I miss those days. We didn't have any blemish. Okay, and that's pretty good. I cannot find any blemish here. So, that's great. Create another layer and name that eye bags. Here too, we're gonna use the healing brush too, but you might ask why did we create another layer? We could have done this in the same layer. Here's why, I'll show you why. Okay, so select the healing brush too, same healing brush too, just sample an area right here, take a sample from here, and start painting over this area. Just remember one thing. When you are painting, do not leave the brush. Do not do like this. Do not paint half of it, release it, and then paint the full of it. Do not do anything like that. Paint it all at one go, okay? That's the trick. Paint it all in one go. Why, you might ask. Let me show you why. If you take a sample from here, and if you paint, as we go forward, have a look at the previous areas. It still changes color, right? It still changes color based on the area that we are sampling, okay? So that's why I asked you to do not let go of the brush, okay? So as we paint over here, take a sample from here, as we paint over from here, do not remove all the lines. It will change color based on which area you are sampling, so do not let go of the brush. And by the way, I have a dedicated tutorial on that, so make sure you watch that, where I talk about this trick extensively. Okay, leave two lines. We do, this is not a beauty retouch. This, these are kids, innocent kids. The media should not affect them. The media standards, the something which we have thought as an ideal skin, there's nothing ideal, it's just constructions of our mind. Everything is beautiful. Okay, there we go. Now, the reason why I asked you to create, look, it's not looking nice. We're gonna take a sample again, let's try again. See, it did a bad job there, take a sample. Do that again. Try not to release the brush. Okay, if you're satisfied, maybe this is a little darker. Okay, there we go. The reason why I asked you to create a new layer is that we don't want to completely remove it, right? We don't want to remove it, we want to reduce it. It's a kid, right? So, decrease the opacity, just like that. This is zero, this is just... Uh, just where it looks natural, just 61, 65 is good. Now, you might ask again, we could have decreased the opacity in the healing layer itself, but if we decrease the opacity, we would just reveal some of the blemishes. But blemishes are something which we wanted to completely remove. But eye bags are something we didn't want to completely remove, okay? So we can name that eye bags, or under eye lines, or whatever you wanna name it, name it. Now it's time for us to do frequency separation. Do we use a soft brush for healing too? Yes, depends upon, okay, good question, very good question. So when you're healing, for example, we were dealing with these lines, right? So make it a little soft, don't make it completely hard. If you make it hard, it will look like a line. Let me just increase the opacity, let me just show you. 
it will show up. Look at the line, it shows up. Make it soft. How soft? That's the, that's the better question. Okay, so you're dealing with these lines. So make it just soft as to when you heal, it looks smooth, right? Don't make it too soft that the wrinkles don't completely remove. Make it soft so much so that it blends in nicely, okay? So for example, if we were doing that again, I'm gonna show you, if we were doing that again, and by the way, make sure sample current and below or all layers is checked, okay? All layers have to be checked, okay? Sampling right here, and it has to be this soft so that it's merging right here. If it's too soft, it won't remove it completely. And if you go here by mistake, it will just jump over the line. We didn't want to remove that line. So you need to have a precise selection of that. And by the way, make sure all layers is checked here while you're doing that. So let's reduce that to 65. And there we go. This was removing blemishes. If you have any questions, make sure you ask that. Varul says you're an inspiration. Thank you so much. If tomorrow upload this video or not, yes, I will upload this video. Okay. Hi, hi everybody. Now it's time for us to do some frequency separation. Let's see how many people are online. I'm really curious. Six watching now? How many people are online? Just let me know how many people. I'll be happy to know. My phone says six. I don't know why. It's just six people. Anyway, let's go to frequency separation. For frequency separation, we need to create a merged layer, okay? And a copy of that. To do that, create a new layer, empty layer, and press Control Alt Shift E. Command Option Shift E if you're using a Mac, and then name this one color. Okay, Devil Psyche SS. Are you from India? Yes, I am from India, and make a copy of that. Name it Details. What are we doing? Frequency separation. Just double click on the name and name it Details. And by the way, if you're wondering how to name a layer, just double click on that name. Okay. Turn off the details, come back to the color. And this time, it's important that we zoom in quite a bit. Now, once we zoom in, go to filter, blur, and then Gaussian blur. Now, this is too much. We didn't want to blur that much. So, take this ladder all the way to the left and increase it gradually, okay? Very gradually, just at the point where the skin texture goes away. Just at that point, we need to stop. Since this child doesn't have much of a skin texture, so we might find it the number to be quite low. I guess 2.6 or 2.7, 2.8 is a good number to be at. And let's go for 2.8. Click OK. Now, turn on the details layer, come to the details layer, select that layer, and then go to image, apply image. Now, layer, select color layer. Now we want to delete the merge, uh, the blurred layer from this one so that all we have in this is that the details. We want this layer just to have the details and we want this layer just to have the colors. So we blurred that layer and we want this layer just to have the details. So if we subtract the color from this layer and the blurriness, what do we have? Just the details. So the blend mode that we'll select is simply, as the name suggests, subtract. And set the number to two and 128. There's a deep explanation as to why this happens, but this is out of scope for this video. I can explain this for maybe, it will take 15 minutes to explain, but not for this video. Color RGB subtract to 128, click OK. Now change the blend mode of this one to linear light. There we go. Now make a group of both of these. So press and hold controller command and select the other one, controller command G. And name this frequency separation. If you have any questions, if you didn't understand the thing in between the tutorial, just let me know. Okay, if we turn off the group, interestingly, make a group of the background too. Okay, make a group of the background and name it background. If we turn off this layer, have a look, we still have the same image, which means, but as you can see, they both have different images. This is a blurred image and this just has the details, which means that they both combine to form the original image accurately. So if it doesn't do that, you have done something somewhere wrong. Okay, let's turn on back on the layers. Now all you have to do, come to the color layer and we need to blend in the colors. 
with the texture still intact. The texture is still intact, nothing's happening to the texture. We are just dealing with the color. Frequency separation allows you to deal with either the color or the texture separately. Suppose you want to blend in, there's a blotchiness there in the skin, okay? The skin tone is very uneven, you want to soften that out. You want to work with the color. If you want a wrinkle, if you want to remove something like a wrinkle, you want to work with the details layer. But this is a child's photo, we don't want to edit the wrinkles or stuff, we just want to edit the colors, okay? Question, let's take on some questions. Please make a video uh, on Mixer Brush Tool. That's what we are doing. This is, we are just gonna do that. Can you teach us how to color grade a photo black and white and make it look perfect? I have a lot of tutorials. Just search black and white. Go to my channel, search black and white. Ton of tutorials out there. Uh, one of the great things is that he only uses a mouse, like many of us, so we can see what can be done. Yes, I use a Dell mouse. A Dell mouse. The details are the skin texture. Of the, the details are the texture of the skin. Yes, they are the texture of the skin. Do you use a pen tablet? No, I don't use. I tried for a sponsorship from Wacom, but they didn't give me. Anyway, so let's come back to this. Select the color layer. We need to blend the colors, right? So all you have to do, 91 people watching. So amazing to see you guys. All you have to do, select, right click on it and select the mixer brush tool. Now, what does the mixer brush tool do? Now, let me show you what it does, okay? Select the Mixer Brush tool. It's amazing tool for blending in. So I have to show you what it does. Okay, I have to destroy an image to show you what it does. I'm so sorry, Egle. Egle. I hope I'm pronouncing your name right. I'm so sorry. I'm bad with names. You need to tell me what your name pronounces. Uh, how I can pronounce your name. You need to teach me after the session. Okay. So the Mixer Brush tool, what it does, it's simply just if we take a Mixer Brush tool and this is the merged image. Okay, it just completely mixes up stuff. Okay, if we increase the wetness, this is, these are the properties of the brush. Just like a brush, how wet is the brush? How much load of color the brush has? How much the brush is mixing colors? Colors are, are the colors dry or are the colors wet? Talking about the colors here, the flow. Just like opacity and flow, it's just that, okay? Flow means how many times do you have to paint in order to get that completely opaque. Which means, for example, if you're painting with a brush with black color and the flow is 10%, you have to paint in 10 times, okay? 10 times to get it completely opaque. And opacity is something different. If the opacity is 10% and you paint in 10 times, the opacity still remain 10, remains 10%, unless, of course, you click 10 times. You need to understand the difference between opacity and flow, that's important. Let me just show you that. Okay, I'm getting sidetracked, but this is essential. Okay, we take in a brush. The flow is 10%, opacity is 100. The color is black. We paint in with black right here. Okay. I'm not releasing the mouse. Okay, painting with black right here. I'm not releasing the mouse. Still painting 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. It becomes completely black. But if the flow is 100, opacity is 10. If we go like this, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, opacity still remains 10. But if you have to click 10 times in order to get it completely black in opacity, maybe more than 10 times, but you get the idea. Okay, so that's opacity and flow. So the flow is that, when we select the mixer brush tool, the flow is that. And the wetness, how wet is the brush? So let's increase, if the brush was too wet, so what it would do, it would just mix up stuff. Right, it mixes up stuff, just like this takes the color, what, whatever is underneath it, and it mixes up stuff. So make sure you have clicked this, otherwise it will take its own color. Make sure this is checked, and then you paint, okay? So we didn't want that to happen, let's just go ahead and clear that out. Okay, come back to this one with the mixer brush, and just mix it up, okay? Wet, just reduce it to 5%, note down the values, 575, 90, 20, okay? Just note down the values, okay just simply paint over the areas. Be minimal with that, okay? Be very minimal with that. Only paint over the areas and only match and mix those areas which requires mixing, which requires to be blended, which has a little bit decoloration because if you overdo it, it will be, it, give, it will give you a telltale, a telltale signs of retouching, okay? Hi, Melvin from New York, amazing. I would, I always wanted to be, wanted to go to New York Concrete jungles where dreams are made of. Okay. 
just blend in those areas. Okay, Varol asks, can you include some of the videos featuring of PSCC later on sometime would be very appreciated. Most of my videos are done on PSCC. And maybe currently the thing that I'm working on in Photoshop CC. And just slowly and gradually blend in these areas, just like that. Have a look. This is a little bit discolored, so we'll blend in just like that. And you might not be able to see the differences right now. I'm afraid whether you're able to see them, but we are blending it very slowly. Okay. And there's a magic at the end of frequency separation, which I'm going to tell you, which I'm going to share with you. And that, that is really important. And that's one of the magic tricks, which not a lot of people tell you about. A lot of people have sent me pictures of amazing photographers, amazing people who just click photos of children. And I looked through the photos and they always wanted to know how to retouch photos like that. So I'm in like there are food hackers, right? I'm kind of trying to be a Photoshop hacker, fi figuring out what the way they are using. So this is one of the way that I found that's this is mixer brush. And by the way, this was taught to me by Troy Davidson. He actually taught me the secret. So I'm, I'm willing to share this with you today. There are a lot of other secrets that I'm going to share with you today. People don't tell easily when it comes to Photoshop. They don't want to share. But you know, sharing is the key. Why? Because Abraham Lincoln once said, now I'm being philosophical, uh, that if you have an apple, okay, just consider this. If you have an apple, if I have an apple, and we share this with each other, share, share that with each other, we still have one apple each, right? But if you have an idea, and I have an idea, and we share that with each other, we have two ideas each. So we should always share knowledge. Okay, now I think we did a pretty much of it. Have a look at the before and after. So this is the before, this is the after. Does an amazing job. And by the way, the trick is when you're merging this, do it in the direction of skin texture. So if the skin texture is just like this, you paint in that direction. If the skin texture, for example, it, here, the skin texture was there to there, right? Going like that. You do not have to paint like this. Paint instead like that. Okay. Hi from Budapest. Hi, Agnes. Great to see you. Um, dreams come true in California, not New York. Dreams come, can, I, I don't know. I have to go to California to see that, to check that. But dreams can come true in the most darkest corners of the world. It just does, doesn't depend upon the place where you're at. <coughs> okay. So we have done pretty much here. We need to merge a little bit there. There we go. And uh, there a little bit. I'm taking a little longer. Okay, that's, there we go. Have a look at the before and after. Okay, there we go, have a look. So this is the before, this is the after. Now we have to merge this area just a little bit. So always paint in the direction of skin texture, okay? So that's one of the tips. Now, let's paint his body. So direction of skin texture here to there, right? So paint over. Just only paint over the areas which require softening, okay? Like this area, which requires softening. Just like this doesn't require much of a softening, it's fine by itself. And that's good. Now you can take, as much time as you want, but I'm going to do it really quickly. There we go. Now, this looks too softened. We don't. We want more details. Simple. Make a copy of the details layer. Controller Command J. Now we have, as you can see, more details on the skin. As you can see, the skin texture is still intact, right? It's still intact. Now, Photoshop is lagging a bit. It's still intact, but. The skin is yet softened. That's the magic of frequency separation. Now this details adds details to almost all other areas. So we can create a mask, press and hold Ultra option and click on this. 
creates a negative mask, then take the normal brush and paint with white just over the skin to bring back the details. And this time, make sure the opacity is 100. Flow is also 100. Okay, we're getting back the textures. You cannot see in your screen, I know, because of the stream quality. But if we zoom in, I'll show you. Look at the texture. Look at the texture that we create in. Okay. There's a freebie for you guys at the end of the live stream, so make sure you stay tuned. And maybe I'll cut that area off when I post the replay. So you guys are special. Or maybe I won't. I don't know. Okay. So anyway, you guys are special because they're joining me live, talking to me. It's, been, it's going a great time there. So once you have got the details back, here is the trick, which a lot of people not tell you. This might look very simple, but this is a very important trick which we miss. Select the group, okay? Frequency separation group. And now, ready for the magic? Just decrease the opacity. We don't want it to be completely smooth. We want it to be a little smooth. We want, also want it to look real, but also we want to soften that. So instead of staying in that dilemma, Let's decrease the opacity. Let's find a middle ground. Maybe 70% is good. Okay. It looks good. Now it's time for us to add an overall contrast. Let's see how many people are joining in. 100 people watching live and no likes yet. Anyway, I can live, I can live with that. So let's add an overall contrast. Click on this button. Okay. Once you click on that button, then you get something called curves. Open up the curves adjustment layer there. Let's just... Okay, and let's add a little bit of darkness. We want it to be a little dark. Okay, explain the difference between vibrance and saturation. I exactly have a tutorial on that. Just search difference between vibrance and saturation. That's there on my channel. What is for free, I'll tell you later. Okay, LKLD, what's the best? What's LKLD? I don't know. Uh, will you come to Dubai? I don't know. I have no idea. Uh, one life from me in Bali, thank you so much. High pass filter versus apply image. High pass, you see, there's a difference. In high pass filter, what you do, you don't exactly know, right? You don't exactly know which value to choose. You have to fi find out, you have to figure out. When you go to apply image, you exactly know the values of the detail, right? You don't have to dial in any value. You exactly know which values combine to give you the accurate image. And that's why apply image is the best. Okay. I've tried high pass before. I'm telling you from an experience point of view, let's darken it a bit, brighten it up a bit. And if you want in depth knowledge about how to use curves, watch my tutorial on using curves in Photoshop. Okay, there we go. We added an overall contrast. After adding a contrast, it's time for us to dodge and burn. So I'm going to teach you another way of dodging and burning, though there are tons of ways. I'm going to teach you some other ways. Okay. All right. Now, all you have to do is just create just group of this, even if it's one layer, create a group, name that overall contrast. Why are we doing this? So we can always go back and change it if required. So overall contrast. If you guys have any questions, make sure you ask that. Okay. I see 51 likes. Thank you so much. All right. This is overall contrast. Next, we're going to add dodging and burning. Create two curves adjustment layer. One, two. Okay. Name this darken. and name this Brighton. You can also name dodging and dodge and burn and but that's just difficult terminologies. Okay, now make the masks of both of these, invert the masks of both of these. Okay, how to invert the mask? How did I do that? Select the mask, press Ctrl or Command I. Select the mask, press Ctrl or Command I. Then in the darken, just darken it. Since the mask is black, you cannot see it. Just darken it just like that, just something like that. And if you really want to be precise, um, just set the values to 90 and this one to 180. If you really want to see what, if you really want to stay by the value, there's no hard and fast rule. Okay, set that, close it. And if you select this one to brighten, brighten it up 
or if you really want to be with the values you can set the input to say 90 and set this one to 180 something like that okay there we go now select the brighten layer mask take the brush make sure the foreground color is white decrease the flow to around 2% or maybe 3% depending, depending upon how much proficient you are if you can do that really fast and if you don't have to brush a couple of time to figure out where to paint hard where to paint soft then you can take it at 10 but I prefer it to have at 2 3 or 1 so let's keep it at 2 and just simply paint over the areas which are protruding towards the direction of light now where is the light coming from somewhere from the right okay so we need to paint a little bright there <laughs> tip here is paint on the areas which are already a little bright okay make it a little soft and and by the way how to make a brush soft press and hold the alt and option alt or option and then drag with the right mouse button drag it to the right to make it bigger drag it to the left to make it smaller drag it up to make it soft drag it down to make it hard okay great simply paint over these areas as you can see how nicely they are being brightened up so the nose is supposed to be a little white this towards the direction of light we paint it with a little white and we paint this area with a little white just like that okay there we go be really careful don't paint over the dark areas and if you paint extra by mistake all you have to do you have to press x the foreground color is black and you can just erase it okay and one of the tricks that i use i paint a little extra just like this okay i paint a little extra on purpose then take the black color and paint out the areas which i don't want okay so that's a trick worth remembering here this area just a little bit and by the way all of this is non-destructive you can always take the curves up or down or you can decrease or increase the opacity and check out the values brighten this up just a little bit there we go please give detailed tutorial for the use of curves I have a tutorial how to use curves in Photoshop using curves in Photoshop just check that out okay now we have painted that paint on the areas which are protruding in the direction of light now once in a while zoom out and see how it looks have a look at the before and after before after it looks good not that amazing so we need to correct some areas we painted a little extra there select the black and just paint a little there okay make it a little more brighter make the nose a little more brighter give it a little more dimension by painting a little here now this can take a couple of minutes depending upon how much you want to work in it you know sometimes in fashion and making magazine covers dodging and burning can take hours it takes four so four or five hours of straight dodging and burning especially in magazines and stuff fashion magazine covers okay all right now it seems like have a look have a look at the before and after and if you're not confident with your dodging and burning i am going to give you a tip okay after you do this all you can do you can try changing the blend mode to luminosity see how it looks if it's giving you a color cast in this it didn't give a color cast if it gives you a color cast change the blend mode to luminosity now also you can click on the curves and play with the values of red green and blue if it's giving you a color cast if it's too red just go to reds and decrease it if it's too green go to green and decrease it and so on and so forth now the tip is this click on the mask go to the properties if you don't see it windows and then properties so where is the properties I really need to find out there it is okay now just turn on the mask how to see just the mask press no alter option click on it and increase the feather just soften it out 
maybe to 50 percent 50 pixels there we go now just press and hold ultra option click on it again have a look at the before before after how beautiful this looks now now take the brush maybe I'm gonna delete some areas I want I didn't want this area to be so much more brightened or this area to be so much more brightened there we go have a look right now did it make sense okay how to remove the exposure from the forehead just take a brush and burn it or if you're in Lightroom just take an adjustment brush and decrease the exposure as simple as that see how nicely we have got the highlights there there we go have a look so before after gives the portrait a very nice dimension right now let's do it similarly the same for the body take the brush and with white so this is a session where I just simply retouch photos and you can see the exact workflow of retouching important photos here okay we got the details there there we go a little bit brightness right here and that's done a little there I think it doesn't need much of a brightness there we go it's pretty much done we paint a little black there it's too much there I think okay have a look before after give this so much more dimension I think we can also paint a little there just a little bit there okay thanks brother you're awesome thank you so much Gagan thank you God. okay there we go just like that done okay great now we did spill out a little bit there so you can easily take the brush toggle it and increase the flow to correct that just remove that extra area there we go and it's gone have a look before oops Bef before after now come to the darks okay in the dark similarly just paint over the areas that are protruding away from the direction of light give me a second guys I really need to wipe it off. There we go. Okay. All right. Zoom in quite a bit. And then with the brush, just paint over the dark areas. Whoops. We did a mistake. Decrease the flow to around 2%. Zoom in on the dark areas and just simply paint in. Be really gentle. okay that looks good just paint a little in this area let's zoom out quite a bit and we can just darken this a little bit maybe this eye a little bit from there giving it a little dimension okay and the smile lines to enhance the smile a little bit there just a touch not too much just a touch okay just a touch there we go now do the same here Brother, you're the best. Keep your channel up. Thank you so much. Just keep supporting. I'll keep my channel up. You guys are the lifelines of this channel. Okay. Now we are pretty much good with this. Okay. Now have a look at the darks. Have before, after. This gives a little bit of dimension to the photo. There we go. And never miss your videos and miss. Thank you so much. Way to go. Bye. Just when you're commenting, just let me know where you're from so that I have a general idea of who's watching from where because I really need to know where do you guys live. So, looks good. A little bit smaller there. Let's give the nose a little dimension. 
Now you can go hours and hours for that. If you're making a huge print, you can afford to go hours on this one. Now here too, you can just blur it up a little bit if you want, just zoom out and maybe have a look at the before and after, before, after. Creates a little bit of dimension. Now come to this one, have a look. Maybe by accidentally I just opened the selected mask. Didn't want to do that, cancel that. Okay, come, to, come back to the properties, windows, and then to the properties. So in the properties, just you can select so like just, just we can maybe give it 30%. That looks good. Or maybe a 20%. 20 pixel, right? Get it back, have a look before, after. It's a really nice darkness. We can just go on and on on this. It can take some time. Okay. After this, I'll, I'm going to take some questions. So make your uh, keep your questions ready so that I can answer them. Now, as you can see, the dark area is a little grayed out. They're looking a little gray. They're missing a little color. So what we do, we simply go to that curves adjustment layer, open up the curves, and just maybe you think if, if it's a little bit of lacking red, you can increase the red in those areas, just a little bit, just a tinge, maybe. But it's, it's, if we do that, have a look, if we do that, it's not looking great. Let's try increasing the magenta there by decreasing the greens just a little bit just a tiny bit but in this picture it doesn't require that but sometimes it does and if it does go to the greens if it does all you need to do you know what to do let's go ahead and decrease the opacity of the dark areas if the opacity is 100% it looks like this but I'm gonna keep it at maybe 88 looks good 85 Okay, let's keep it 90 Okay, now make a group of both of these, Control Command G, select both of them, Control Command G, look before, after. See what a difference this makes. But we're lacking something, we're lacking some skin texture, right? Here's what you need to do, turn off these overall contrast. Now, here's the advantage of this, we're lacking some skin texture, we can always go back, right? So turn off these two and open up the frequency separation again. And this time, create a new layer, and we're gonna do this inside frequency separation or maybe create a new layer and create a merged copy. Press Control, Alt, Shift, E. Okay. Or even turn off the frequency separation. We are in the before. Okay, Control, Alt, Shift, E. Now give this a high pass. Filter, other, high pass. And this time, let's give it a bigger high pass. Let's give it something big. Maybe four or something really accentuate the skin texture okay and go to image adjustments and then desaturate now when you apply a larger high pass you tend to have a little color around the edges so we want to take away the color so you'd go to image adjustments and then desaturate okay and then change the blend mode of this one to overlay now we have a little extra texture now you can limit this texture just to the skin how by creating a mask but let's just not do it it's going to take couple of time and we are running short of time overall contrast and then this okay great now we have this in place we can go ahead and name this dodge and burn now that's why I asked you to create a group you can always go ahead and decrease the overall opacity or intensity of an effect so that's kind of a uh, I'll keep it 90 maybe 92 is fine now Make a group of this two, name it sharpness, overall, there you go. And there's no hard and fast rule that you have to create these in order. Depending upon what are your needs, what does your image needs, you can create these groups or do whatever you want one after the other. Okay, so do you always use the same mixer brush settings when you're using on a frequency separation layer? Yes, I do always. It works for most of the images. When it doesn't work, I try to tweak the values and you know what the values do. The more you increase the wetness, the longer it will drag that same color. Suppose you're painting on a skin. Suppose you took from this area and you just painted. The, if the wetness is low, it will just drag to, up to this extent and it will stop because the brush, brush was a little dry. If you decrease the wetness, think of it like this. If you decrease the wetness, it's just like a normal brush. You're making it dry. And if you paint with a dry brush, it just 
paints for a short distance. If the wetness is high, which means the brush is really wet, it paints for a longer duration. It paints a longer line. That's what it does. You can always go ahead and tweak the values. Just think of it like no a normal brush. How wet the brush is, how much load the brush has, what amount of color the brush can take load of, the flow. And that's pretty much all it. What what is what is the other term there? Load, mix, how much mixing it is doing. How much can the color mix? So that's pretty much it. Think of Photoshop in real life examples. And that's just it. It's like dodging and burning. Whatever it's protruding in the direction of light. The mixer brush. Just think of it like a real brush. And Photoshop will be easy for you. Okay? And after dodging and burning, let's take care of the eyes. Um, Photojack says, very informative. Thank you. Do you ever take snapshots as you edit? In Lightroom, yes, I do take snapshots. Okay, to look at the different versions. How to remove transparent object from a busy background and placing it on a white backdrop. Please do tutorial and sending third time. I did a tutorial on how to select transparent object. Just check that out. Busy background, it's impossible. I'm telling you, it's impossible. That's the bitter truth. If there's trees there, buildings there, and you hold up a transparent cloth and you want to select that, that's impossible. I'm saying this might sound bad, but that is indeed impossible. Okay, now, eyes, yes. I just forgot what was I talking about. Okay. Now, simply, you know what we do about the eyes. I've told this a th thousand times, and I've done this with you guys. It's really simple. Select the elliptical marquee tool, make a selection of this, and just move it. By the way, how to move a selection like this? All you have to do, press the space bar, press and hold the space bar to move it and release the space bar to make it bigger or smaller. And all this time, shift is held to maintain the proportions of the circle, okay? But the eyeball is not completely circled, right? So we can let go of the shift and just we like that, okay? That's pretty good. Okay, stay away from the corners of the eyeball. Make a selection like this. So the light is coming from this direction, right? Just this direction. And we need to create something perpendicular to that, a line perpendicular to that, a little more than the half from the eye. So select the polygonal lasso tool, press and hold the Alt key. This changes to a minus polygonal lasso tool and create a line that way, just like this. Debashi's best image resolution without stressing the workstation depends on your workstation if you have a powerful workstation you can even work with 50 mil currently i'm working with an image from 5d mark 4 and i have a very pretty cheap standard this is not even a workstation i don't call it a workstation i just have 8 gigs of ram i5 processor windows pc just which i bought for like 550 dollars okay i assembled actually take it again the elliptical marquee tool, press and hold the Alt key, this changes into a minus, make it a little bigger, and subtract the middle point from this area, just like this. Make it a little C shape. Okay, now, fill it up with white. Make sure the foreground color is white. How to fill it up with white? Alt backspace. Fill this up with white, Control command D. Now we need to blur it out just a little bit. How to blur it out? Go to filter, blur, Gaussian blur. And how much to blur? Blur as much so that these corners just go away, okay? So blurring according to just this value is fine. Nine is good, okay? Then click OK, change the value, the blend mode of this one to overlay. Now once you have changed the blend mode to overlay, you can just erase the corners if it's showing up in the corners. Take the brush, create a mask if you want, or just simply erase it, you don't want to load up Photoshop with a ton of masks and stuff. Just erase this from the middle if there is something there. Okay, just like that. Gives you a pretty nice result. Now what you can do, right click on it and go to blending options or double click on the right hand side of the layer, opens up layer styles dialog box. And once it opens up the layer styles dialog box, it's still not opening just. Okay, take the slider of the underlying layer from the left to right. Okay, I just hope you can see it. Now this creates more drama in the eyes. Now you might wanna click 
or press and hold alt or option and click on this to just separate these just like that and make okay click on okay and then we have created that before after now copy it to the other eye press and hold alt or option and click and drag it to the other eye okay there we go have a look now I think this eye is a little brighter than that so we'll take down the opacity of this one maybe to 62 62 uh, 65 ish maybe 60 okay now group both of these you can group both of these you cannot group both of these totally upon you and we can group actually group both of these control command G and name it I shine shine or maybe name it kicker light and you can decrease the opacity or increase the opacity of this according to your choice maybe I'll keep it at 90 90 is good and now simple all you have to do now is create another layer we're gonna talk about the color now when we're retouching eyes we are retouching two things the color and the shine so first we'll take care of the shine and then the color now we took care of the kicker light now let's take care of the catch light okay to take care of the catch light that's really simple click a new layer now this is going really intricate you don't have to do this with every portrait okay just some portraits which are really really important and make the brush a little smaller make sure the foreground color is white flow this time is 100 and just click once right here maybe a little lower and do the same with the other eye just like this zoom it out now that's kind of a too much all you have to do this time right click on it and go to blending options you know what to do take the slider of the underlying layer from left to right just like that and okay and decrease the opacity maybe to 80 and maybe we want to retouch that a little bit more okay now have a look at the before and after before after catch light gives it a really nice look now let's take care of the color of the eyes so to take care of the color eye is a little greenish little greenish so create a new layer okay this time a solid color adjustment layer okay click on this button and click on solid color now once you select solid color just click OK any color will do just turn it off and click on this again double click on this again and this time sample this color whatever color this was so this is a little greenish so we want to increase the saturation go come down to the saturation tab and increase the saturation a little bit okay just a little bit so as you can see these are hue saturation brightness what color you choose the saturation you choose and the brightness that you choose make it a little brighter saturation decrease a little saturation click OK now once you do that turn this on and change the blend mode to color then make the mask black select the mask press ctrl command I and then take the brush paint it with white simple and you can always go ahead and change the colors if you want you know how to do that right okay now of course decrease the opacity that's too kind of too much give it a little 20 percent opacity and let's just merge all of these all of these name it catch light and name this one color eye or eye color and just group all of these color eye catch light and kicker light kicker light group these three and name it eyes so have a look at the before and after of the eye so before after so much more dimension to the eye makes it so much more interesting but the trick is this decrease the opacity don't oh, make it overkill so make it 80 percent that's good now we're gonna take care of the whites of the eyes so let's take care of that simple create by the way if you have any questions make sure you ask that um hi Shah Rukh Khan why do you call me a Khan? Thank you. How to discover color? I'll take that as a compliment, by the way. How to discover color casting? I have a tutorial on that. Check that out. How to color correct skin? It will help you figure out how to do that. Also, one more tutorial on how to take away the reds from the skin. 
watch that it will help you hi from music city your skill and ability to teach are impressive thank you thank you john hello from romania 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 hi sorry i'm so sorry to pronounce that wrong romania blendif is fabulous yes it is it's awesome hello from bosnia and herzegovina and by the way i studied about bosnia and herzegovina govina in my history just last year best image resolution okay now 89 people watching great to have you guys now let's brighten up the eye whites well how to do that create a levels adjustment layer any adjustment layer will do and just change the blend mode of this one to screen okay now make the mask negative press control command i and then spain amazing hi antonio jose jose okay take the brush I'm bad with name pronunciations, Antonio. I'm so sorry. I can pronounce Antonio. That's why I'm saying it. I'm really sorry about that. Just paint over this area. Okay. Simply. And it's always better to paint extra and remove it. Instead of just making the brush a little smaller, going into the corners, it's easier to paint extra, just like spill out and then remove the extras. It's easier to do that instead of being perfect while painting it. Okay, easier to remove it out. There we go ahead and there we remove it. The whites of the eyes. There we go. Now, decrease the opacity that looks alien, maybe to 25-ish. Have a look at the before and after, before, after. Now, let's make the eyes a little bluish, the eye whites a little bluish. Here's the thing. The more yellow the eye whites are, the more older you look. As, it, as a human grows older, the eye whites go more yellower with age. So, we need to make it a little blue. It's a little yellowish maybe due to the camera maybe due to the light situation so we need to make it a little bluish so we can do that with this too we can go to the blues and maybe try decreasing the blues uh, increasing the blues taking it just to the left maybe a little bit of there we go before and after okay we did that now let's have a look and we can also save it inside of eyes so have a look at the before after makes a lot of difference save that inside of eyes there we go before after gives a lot of dimension to the eyes okay eyes are the most important things in a face now unless of course the person is wearing goggles now let's whiten up the teeth it's simple create a vibrance adjustment layer Take down the vibrance all the way to maybe 60, maybe take it to minus 50. You can always adjust it, by the way, and make the mask black. Invert the mask, press Ctrl or Command I. What would you do if one of the eye color is a little bit darker than the other, the white part? Create a separate adjustment layer. Create a separate levels adjustment layer. In one, uh, I just let me just show you what to do. So this, we have different adjustment layers, right? So we decreased the opacity 25. So create a separate levels adjustment layer and paint on the other eye and then increase the opacity for that adjustment layer. So we have two levels adjustment layer. Does that make sense, Hitesh? Okay. Now, vibrance. With the vibrance selected, just select the mask and just paint over the teeth with white. See, it's becoming white. Just don't go over the gums. If you spill over the gums, it will look strange. So make sure you're painting just over the teeth. Don't spill out. And doing it really quickly, you take your time. Okay, now that looks pretty good. Now, it's too white. It looks like a Colgate advertisement. And it's, this is normal. Take it a little bit, maybe. I think that was a good number to be at. Maybe 35, minus 35 is good. We can always come back and adjust that anyway. Okay, have a look. 
it looks nice. I think we have kind of overdone the eyes. We can increase the opacity, decrease the opacity to maybe 65%. And there we go. Look at the teeth. It look, it's looking nice. Have a look at the before and after, the total before and after, the vibrance. Let's create a group of this one and name it teeth. Turn off, just, okay. If we look just at this image, so this is the before, ton of difference, this is the after. A lot of difference in no time. Okay, now it's time for us to look at a separate thing called, what the heck is this? It's showing this line here. It sometimes happens with, up with Photoshop, just completely looks broken, dodging and burning. It just renders it just like this. Have a look. How the hell does this? We never created that line. Where did that line came from? If we go back, we never created that line. Just a Photoshop bug there. See this line created? We didn't create that, did we? No, we didn't. So let's just come back to that and okay. Okay. Just let's look at the dodging and burning. This layer just simply created this. I don't know, it's a bug. So we can solve this easily by take the brush and just paint it again. It's a Photoshop bug, by the way. Now we're getting it back. Now we're getting it back. Once we paint, we're getting it back. And that's a Photoshop bug. We got it back. <laughs> what kind of a bug that was? Anyway, so we got it back, anyway, so it's good. All right, it's looking cool. Now it's time for us to add some mood to the photo. Okay, so have a look at the previous photo, what we did. Okay, we took care of the eyes and we added an overall contrast, dodging and burning. We did the skin, we took care of the skin and then we took care of the eyes, why is miscellaneous? Now, let's take care of the skin, okay? Skin is too bright. Create a curves adjustment layer and maybe darken the skin a bit. Just the skin. Darken it up just a little bit. Don't lose the contrast, but darken it up. And it's looking a little yellowish, little magenta-ish. So what do we do? Go to the blues and increase the blues just a little bit and come to the greens and increase the greens so that it doesn't look too much magenta okay very tiny adjustment before after very tiny adjustment now let's come back to this mask we just need to paint the skin here so what we can do you can go to filter or select color range and then in the color range there's an option called skin tones okay select skin tones so it selects skin tones automatically and then using the fuzziness slider you can just determine the value where the skin tone is best selected or what you can do, you can do it manually. I found that manual way is the best way. Just click on the skin and with the plus just drag around the skin. Instead of just clicking like once, 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 once here and there, just click and drag just like painting over the skin. Okay, just like that. Okay, using the fuzziness the areas that are white, that areas are the areas where the effects will be applied. The areas that are black are the areas where effects will not be applied. If you click OK, look at the mask. Look at the mask and that's what it is. Okay. What if I had to get back to this video? There will be this video. I will upload this video after Facebook. I think YouTube automatically uploads this video after the live stream. It will do that maybe by tomorrow. I'll just make the video public. So have a look. Before and I mean the mask, this is the mask, but it has not selected some areas. So we have to edit the mask and it has selected some extra areas. So we have to edit that. Press D to just reset the colors, foreground and the background color. Just select that extra area that's left out here. And there we go. Select the extra areas left out. Complete of the nose, there we go. And delete out these areas, we didn't want these areas there. Paint it up with black. There we go. A little bit of it is okay. 
Now you can be precise with it. And it's okay, pretty okay. Now, have a look before, after. It does a very nice effect, give a very subtle effect to the skin. Now, once we have taken care of the skin, now it's time for us. It's always essential to have a separate curves adjustment layer for the skin because in the future, we'll be creating a lot of other mood layers, maybe color lookup layers. And that time, if skin kind of tries to act up, we can always get back to this and edit the skin. Create a group of this and name it skin. Okay, we created the skin. Now it's time for us to add some mood. Let's have a look at this one. What we did after creating the skin, eyes white, miscellaneous. So in the miscellaneous, we ha yeah, we can create that. We can create some moods and some flares. Okay, now have a look at this. It works on a very nice principle called the leading lines. Now you, if you are a photographer, you know what a leading line is, right? So you have seen photos of leading lines leading you to the subject okay you have seen photo photos of like train tracks leading you to the main subject right those are leading lines in a photo in this as you can see very nice composition by Egley Thompson look at these lines they are leading us to the subject so if we go ahead take a brush and just let me show you what. look at these lines these are leading you to the subject and in order to maximize that, in order to enhance that, how about giving these areas some light, some extra light? Here's what we can do. Create a layer, a levels adjustment, okay? Choose levels and change the blend mode just like the other to screen. Now once you do that, it just brightens up everything. We didn't want that. Now create a mask, just invert it, control command I, take the brush, make it a little bigger and make it a little softer and just paint over these areas just like this a little flare kind of stuff okay paint with white just there okay and paint a little here maybe a little there just once it makes that area a little brighter maybe a little there decrease the flow a little bit maybe a little there and maybe a little here okay okay that looks cool now all you have to do now is that take away the areas from his him we don't want this area to be affected there we go that was a bad decision. Now, this looks good. All we have to do now, right click on it and go to blending options to give it some texture. Take this ladder of the underlying layer from left to right, just as we did before, and give it some texture. Press no alter option and just give it some texture. Just like that. Have a look at what kind of an awesome texture it has given. Have a look at the before and after, before, after, before, after. Right? Isn't it awesome? Let's come back to that. We didn't want this extra area, actually. I was right about it. Now I observe this. And I look that this area is a little too dark. Have a look. So simple. We can always go back to the dodge and burn and select the brighten mask, take the brush, and just paint it up with white. And make sure the flow is around 2%. Don't forget that. Okay, now it looks better. That little thing we did there, it looks, it makes it look better. Okay, now it's time for us to add some mood. So let's create a group of it. Maybe name it texture or maybe extra lights. Okay, after extra lights, let's add some flares to the photo. Okay, add some flares. By the way, how about adding a curves adjustment layer, giving, giving it some mood? Damn, I paid 200 years for retouching video that didn't have this much info. You are always giving it for free. Thank you so much, M Melvin Calendar. I always like to give and share information. And uh, okay, I know this and nothing to do with today's topic, but sometimes I have trouble with changing skies where there are trees around. I have a video, my man. I have a video about how to change skies, how to make difficult selections. 
just check out that video that will help you in that example i talk about replacing skies using that using channels okay now create a mood let's make it a little yellowish give it a little sunlight mood just decrease the opacity just like that just decrease the blues giving a little yellow look don't make it simpsons okay just a little Okay, uh, any, and when we add yellow, it kind of becomes too yellow and adds a little green to it. So decrease the greens to give it a little magenta tone. Okay, and then once you do that, maybe come to the reds and try decreasing the reds from the shadows and increasing it in the highlights. Keeping it normal in the highlights, a little low in the shadows, just like that, and come to the RGB. Look what we can do. Maybe we can increase it a little bit and decrease it just like that. And make the shadows a little up. Just like this. Or keep it down for now. It looks the way it looks nice the way it is. Okay. Now it's time for us uh, it, to add some mood to it. We added a little bit mood. Let's add some mood. Let's add some light leaks and some flares in the last live stream we did talk about light leaks and how can you download light, le light leaks you can always google it also you can go to brusheasy.com and you can find some light leaks there and all you have to do you have to place those images just above your image and change the blend mode to either soft light or screen or maybe overlay for that matter so let's go ahead and find the light leak okay so i have some downloaded light leaks somewhere i don't remember where f stock yes there they are let's use this one drag and drop it in photoshop just above this image and that will just load up as a smart object hit enter or return if you're using a mac and then change the blend mode to either soft light or something it looks really nice decrease the opacity maybe 22 25 have a look at the before and after so this is the before this is the after looks so much more creative right so just turn to dark gray there we go before after before after right looks nice doesn't it okay so if you guys have any questions make sure I'm, I'm gonna have to open that hey pics can I have a shout out hi Varun shout out what do you do by the way what's your channel about let us know okay now what we have is this Let's add a lens flare. Lens flare, you know, adding that is really easy in Photoshop. And by the way, it's advisable to use external lens flare because everybody knows and everybody, if they look, they'll see this. You added that lens flare in Photoshop, okay? So try to add, try to download lens flares or create your own lens flares. How to create your own lens flares? Well, that's kind of a simple thing to do. You can just do it, paint it up in Photoshop on a black screen, or you can create it with your bad lens. We'll talk about this in another, another tutorial. Now, create a new layer and fill it up with black. Okay? Now, go to filter. Now, look at where the light was. Light was around here, right? So, just remember that. Filter. Render. Lens flare. Just move it to that area. There we go. And increase the brightness. Just stop at the point where you think it's just, it's fine for you. See, if we increase it too much, see this area? Look at this area carefully. This is clipping, okay? This is becoming so bright that it doesn't have any detail. So just decrease it just like that and keep it here. Click OK. I'll keep it at 150. Okay. And... Once it gives that effect, just change the blend mode to screen. Have a look before, after. Now you might want to decrease the opacity. Maybe you also might want it to just uh, decrease the brightness of that. And let's do that again. Let's decrease the brightness of that. Filter, render, lens flare. Okay. Now let's change the blend mode to screen. Okay. Good. Now let's blur it out a little bit. Go to filter. Blur, Gaussian Blur. Add a little blur to it.
click OK. 41 is good, maybe add a 30 blur. And erase the extra areas, okay? These are some areas we don't want. We just wanted this brightness area. Create a mask, take the brush, make sure the foreground color is black, and just simply paint over this area. Decrease the flow to around 30% or maybe 20% for that matter. So let's just erase that area. There we go, that flare. Okay, we, we got the flare, we got the light leak. Okay. So I think we are pretty much done. There's nothing left right there, or is there? Or is there anything left that we could have done better? So if we didn't apply the curves, yeah, you can add a filter, and then we gotta be talking about the hue saturation stuff. Okay, let's talk about some filters right now. As you can see, the, sc the skin has become a little bit of yellowish. So what we can do, and that's the benefit of this, we can always go back to the skin. Have a look, and that's the reason why I asked you to create that. Let's come back to the mask and just fill it up with black. We didn't want to, so with black, not white, with black. Okay, increase the flow, and just fill it up with black, just like that. Okay, fill this area with black. And let's just close that, let's close the other one, because we are retouching a very huge image. Let's just close the other one. No, we don't want to save that, okay. Now, it's becoming a little bit yellowish. So here's what we need to do. We need to take up the blues right here, just like that. Have a look, does it look nice right, right now? And it's the, okay, great. Now you can add an overall filter if you want to. So let me check whether the internet is fine. Internet is good, okay. Overall filter, maybe name these two flares and add an overall filter. Maybe add a curves adjustment layer. And you can apply a fading or a matte effect just like this, increase. Now, as you can see, the, it's a lot more magenta-ish, so we'll go to greens and just increase the greens a bit just like this, because magenta is what? The opposite of green. Now we have done it. Have a look at the before and after, before, after. Now we have added that effect. All we need right now is some minimalism. Now what do we mean by minimalism? Make a group of all these layers, okay? Select the topmost and select the group just above the background and make a group of all those. Then, this is the last step. This is gonna be really useful to you. Decrease the opacity because sometimes as editors, we go heavy handed. And Troy Davids Davidson told me this, Make a group of every adjustment that you have made, then take down the opacity, okay? Just like that. This is too much. This is, just take down. Maybe we can keep these curves as separate and then just decrease. Maybe 92 is a good number to be at, okay? So that's pretty much it. Now you can save this as a Photoshop document and every time you think, okay, here's the tip. Sometimes we edit and we just keep on editing for hours and hours and hours thinking that the eye needs a little bit of retouching. Maybe the skin is a little too much color. Maybe the teeth has to be whitened a little bit more. Maybe I overdid the vibrant, so on and so forth. And you go hours and hours and hours behind that. Don't do that. Here's what I would suggest. Once you have finished editing, just close your laptop. If it's an important image, just close your laptop, edit any other images, or do something else. Play some video games, take a sip of coffee, coffee, not coffee, and watch a movie. Do anything you want, and come back to that the next day, or maybe an hour later, and then look at it. You'll have a different perspective then. Then you'll be easily able to figure out what the mistakes are, right? All the blocks out of the mind that will go away, and you'll be easily able to do able to figure out where you need to focus more on so that's pretty much it if you guys have any questions make sure you ask that i'm here for five more minutes okay so thank you so much for joining in seems like you guys don't have any questions thank you so all the 57 people watching now i'm really thankful for you thankful to you guys for joining in live and i'll see you guys in my next one i'm so sorry about the intermittent just crashes in between you had a lot of trouble maybe i'll download all the video files and then just let's stitch it and post it online and by the way 
here's the fun part. Here's where the treat is. So as I promised, I'm gonna make this PSD file available for you, right? This PSD file, I'm gonna put it in my drive and make it available for you to download, right? Just for this. But if you want any other PSD files related to any of my other tutorials, it's all available if you are a Patreon member. If you are, so all you have to do, you can go to Pixim, not Pixim Perfect. what am I saying? Patreon.com slash PixImperfect. PixImperfect is a free resource for you and you can help it keep free by supporting us at Patreon.com. Patreon.com slash PixImperfect. Thanks a lot for joining in live and this will be available in the descriptions below. Maybe seven to eight hours later, maybe tomorrow, I'll make the link available. All you have to do, come back to this video, I'll upload the video, come back to this video, download the file and you're good to go. This can, you can use this as a reference as to what to do after what, okay? So I hope you enjoyed it and maybe I'll change the image if Egle does not allow to use this image. We'll figure that out, okay? I'll see you guys in my next one. Till then, stay tuned and make sure that you keep creating.